Hey, what's up, fam? This is potentially a brand new direction that Black Clover might go into. And what I mean by that, it, it, it's really based off a of theory, but one that I think I can back up. So, but first, let's kind of go into the chapter itself and talk about everything that really happened within this chapter. Chapter, uh, chapter 195 for Black Clover uh, called A Complete Change. And that is... One of the things that I really want to point out is just the name of the chapter itself and how I think that will relate later on with uh, with this arc and uh, really, I think, the continuation of the series. So we get where we left off. We have uh, we got Charmy, who's like in, you know, her empowered form. Now that we, It's been revealed that she is half dwarf, half human. You know, she's got her uh, her sick meal magic going out, she's eating all these other attacks and using that energy to amplify herself. She's going against Rila, who is just trying to figure out what to do now. Like, it seems like they're about evenly matched. Potentially, uh, potentially Charmy might run out of magic before it happens. I don't know, because though it is that kind of replenishing factor, I'm wondering if it's a one-for-one one or how exactly, uh, how exactly Charmy's abilities uh, work for you know consuming magic and then and empowering him powering herself with it really we'll probably figure that out um definitely further down the line but i don't think it'll be for a while because it's definitely gonna have to be a point where it's dwarves itself that are explored and I, I that'll just be like charming off puts and gives an explanation to our powers unless we just get a dedicated chapter of her fighting and, and really, at that point, it's just going to be pretty much vital to explain more of, of what is going on with her powers. You know, now she has... I wouldn't really even call it two types of magic. It feels much more like... It feels much more like two sides of the same coin. Because you have one that's very support, and then you just flipped over, and it's of a similar style, but instead of... You know, giving out stamina and power and, and buffs, it's giving it to yourself specifically and kind of taking away from the opponent. But uh, pulling back over, you know, we have Noelle versus Fauna still. She can't figure out how to really defeat her because every single time she, you know, this harms Fauna, she heals back with her crazy new, like, Phoenix fire powers, which is... It looks really cool in this chapter of, of the way that I have the, the fire tails all kind of uh, swirling around. Or I guess it's Phoenix would be tail feathers. But much to, I think, everyone's surprise showing up in the scene and with a comment that I think is hilarious is when uh, right after right after Asta and uh, and Mimosa left, you, you know, you have Noelle who's like, she she wishes that she had Asta's anti-magic there to help, you know, it, it would get right through this whole super regeneration powers that fauna has but uh, a slash comes through you, you think in their minds potentially from that she'd think maybe it's asked but it's actually out of nowhere jack who talks about how now he sees a woman worth cutting which just makes me kind of head scratch and think like how far that might take the uh, for his character based off of who he's he's named that of for those obviously don't know jack the ripper was uh he was a, a a dude like that i don't remember what age it was i think it was france who went around killing killing prostitutes and that was just his thing he'd go around killing uh killing all these prostitutes all the time and it was just that kind of like mindset of him specifically saying that you know a woman worth cutting i don't think that maybe it'll be like he's a serial killer but maybe he prefers fighting women for some reason i don't know we'll figure that out Eventually, we don't know a lot about Jack. He hasn't had that kind of, you know, flashback, find out about him or any of his lore um, currently. You know, we got Asta and Mimosa who come upon David, who, uh, well, the elf possessing David. And, you know, they're wondering who exactly defeated him because he was still pretty powerful. And once Mimosa brings up her, uh, uh, brings up her flower guidepost, you actually get a really interesting bit who, where... You would kind of think of it more towards where it's directed at and not what the possibility is. Um, and, and that's the fact that when they're discussing, like right when Mimosa is, is thinking about what's going on, she uh, talks about how there's a power that's different from uh, a human's or an elf. And even though you just found out about dwarves, I don't think it's the dwarves. Um, 
And, uh, you know, leading up to that, you'd think, oh, maybe it's going to be, uh, you know, because you get like this shout uh, from from Asta when they, when they when they feel Yuno's magic and God damn, you know, got way more powerful. I'm I'm super curious to how exactly how exactly like Asa's gonna catch up because we knew that we knew to kind of for for him to kind of catch up with the you know Asa's speed, uh, high durability, he, and, you know the versatility of anti magic. You know he developed Mana Zone and then had his Spirit Dive form that he created. That, you know kind of. I, I believe it was uh, he saw Asta's black form and thought of his own version, but then now he has the the elf powers on top of it, and he's definitely beyond what Asta is currently capable of. And we see a little bit of where that kind of lies in this, and how much he's adapted after becoming an elf. You know, just going around the countryside fighting elves and you know gathering up troops and probably just constant battle at that point, and it just kind of getting the hang of things. But we got Raya, we got Patriot, and this guy Lone, who I was looking into it after reading this. I don't remember him being anywhere around um, what's going on. Uh, I think he was the last member of the uh, the followers of Seraph or Sephira, whatever the, the name was. And this is, you know, just kind of seeing that last one. When, you know, they're, they're kind of about getting the magic stone from Yuno. They need it to, you know, bring back the elves. But also, you know, the, the happy smile on Lick's face. Because now he's just kind of this gloomy, emotionless guy after everything that happened. And when that's further shown, I think that gives a, a, a little bit more of an interesting motivation for some of them where it's not just them in general they're not doing it just for the elves they're doing it for their leader just like imagining seeing him kind of in this deadpan like hollowed out version of himself probably probably affects them just as much for how much you know they they adored him but i was super surprised because here we have patri using his uh his light swords of judgment and raya who does the imitation version and shooting them at, at you know who uses his mana zone to dodge them all <laughs> so now we got you know with his amplified self dodging all these light speed swords it just like pretty easily obviously though it's in his spirit dive while he's elf bust so it's not like it's nothing to him it's while he's in his most powerful state, he's able to, you know, dance around these. Drops a, uh, a double spirit storm with his mana zone. And even though it was, even though it was kind of like, you know, he's buffed up, he's stronger now. And it doesn't look like he's, you know, he's at a point where he could just kind of walk through them. Even after getting on his spirit storm, it doesn't look like Riot or Patriot or all that. Uh, really all that, like, um, intimidated by him, more impressed. And I talk about just like it looks like his natural potential and like uh, grasp on magic has uh, just that just that potential of uh, of licks just a very very ingrained like understanding of it and that's where I, I think it's gonna get more towards the theory that he's uh, licks son which I'm wondering where that's going to kind of be opened um what we find out exactly of yuno's elf version and that's that's definitely a an area that i think everyone is really interested in but once he once he drops that out lone uh, appears behind him you know grabs the uh, grabs a magic stone and he talks about how it wasn't really speed he just appeared and it's that he once he's touched something, he could kind of freely switch around with it. So he has kind of like this version of, uh, I, I guess, like Sasuke's um, Mangekyo Sharingan special power and like Trafalgar Law's power. Kind of like mixed into one. You know, you're still able to switch around to things, but it's got to touch and be within the vicinity. But after that point, you know, it's a fair game. And even when all these when even all these elves are thinking about the importance of this magic stone so they can complete the reincarnation spell you know only thinks it just because it's an important memento i thought that was cool that even though it was obviously a big deal even to him that he's lost it, it it's not because he knows what exactly it's for it, it's that he he himself like cherishes that and it's it's worth a lot of, of uh you know emotional weight towards him, which is pretty good
Now, here's where the chapter got really thick, and I'll talk about this, and I'll try and be brief with it and, and pretty clear-cut because it's already at 10 minutes. I mean, this is a, this is a really interesting chapter, and so, uh, you know, it's going to be longer than uh, most of my uh, Black Clover reviews. So you have Lona, who's just talking about how he now, with the stone, is uh, in their possession that the debt is repaid for him, and Raya, obviously, being the, the untruthful, the liar, was able to tell that he wasn't actually honest when he was saying that. And then he he ends up asking him who he is. And this is where I want to talk about what, what everything could mean, uh, given Momosa's statement, um, you know, the name of the chapter, and a little bit at the end of, uh, of Raya, who now is this large hole in the stomach and was just kind of pierced through, of this character and where i think this is is whoever this is when he you know you got raya talking about you know his his reincarnation is actually you know exclamation point question mark question mark um that this is actually another like species group and we might find out more exactly of of the world at large hopefully soon because you know we just got dwarves so they're definitely going to be getting things out of the way, but there's also the the uh, theory um, that of of dark elves because people have definitely pointed out the the oh my god I'm, I'm so you can tell even though I'm I'm trying to contain the uh, the tone of my voice my excitement is kind of just like riling me up and I'm I'm tripping over my own words while trying to talk about this. People have been noticing uh, the connections towards uh, I believe it's the North Norse mythology you know you get the the dwarves the elves and the you know the underworld and i've had a theory for a while um about dark elves and you know we see the elves when they get they get more like emotionally negative enough it, it looks like it's distorting like who they are it's like their species aren't aren't really able to cope with being like angry and and, and bloodthirsty and and resentful and you know all these negative sides because uh, you know how peaceful and, and and friendly they were even if they were uh, a little bit reclusive they still seem like a very pure um, very pure people and similar to how they're loved by mana and how mana is kind of their you know it's just naturally the the flow of mana just seems to correlate with them so strongly is that if they get to that breaking point because you know you can go back and look at some of the uh the parts in this is once they get to that more corrupted state it looks like they're starting to become a monster themselves and where i'm kind of going with this is i i believe like it, it mean obviously it's not going to hold a lot of weight right now but the i think this plays into my theory that the creature in asta's uh grimoire isn't really a demon but actually a dark elf because uh, I, I believe that once they get to a point and they switch to Dark Elves instead of being loved by mana, they're hated by mana. And maybe this character, you know, this guy who actually has Lone's body in in this case or who they thought was going to be in his body is actually maybe an agent of, of the Dark Elves. You know, it obviously could be something like a demon or something, uh, you know, crazy along those lines. But I think the Dark Elf would really... Um, kind of put this in a really interesting perspective of uh, where exactly you know are are the sides at, because then it would, if it turns out they're you know they've been wrong this whole time, the humans and the elves could really band together, and this could actually open an area of they can get their friends back, but at the same time they're they're not just kind of going to run through these elves and just beat them all. It, it's it might be more towards um, the Dark Elves, you know, in theory, the, the Dark Elves, or whoever it is that is this, you know, is part of this clan or species, because as I said, it's not a human or an elf, and I doubt it's going to be a dwarf, um, that they're going to be the real threats. Like, every, everything else was just kind of set up. You know, they had, you know, they staked, they kind of built up this war, they needed all this stuff to happen, and now while humans are at their peak you know and the elves are are fighting back against them and you have everything set up for the reincarnation and you have all these guys to these strong contenders that are already you know ko'd or you know running low on power 
it, it would just be the perfect time for how exactly uh, or for for how exactly they're going to you know shift it instead of a fight between humans and elves that it was really just all a you know a front for the real plan for maybe because we know that the the shadow palace is connected to the underworld that the you know quote unquote dark elves or whoever the group is now can come forth and the world will be connected you know possibly or just the idea of more cr magical species just returning in general who knows it, it's it's been such a bunch of twists and turns with black clover lately and it's been in such an interesting way that it keeps it fresh every week and still kind of like guessing and, and, and trying to figure things out. And I, I really like that right now because it's not trying too hard to be overly complicated. It, it feels just like a natural turn and something that could, you know, once we find out, like I said with Charmy, once we find out, we might see all the stuff set up that nobody noticed before. Or maybe just a couple people noticed and they weren't vocal enough about it and people missed it. Who knows? We'll see soon and that's what i really uh, uh, want to take away from this chapter of the mass level of directions that the series could go in now um if it, it turns out that the elves and the humans are wrong on, on both sides and it was really somebody else you know pulling the strings pushing them in a in a direction that they you know wanted just completely 4d chessing them at every single step and Definitely want to see how that goes. Uh, I've been very happy with Tabata and what he's been doing recently, and I hope he can keep this up. Like, this arc has been fantastic, and I still believe it's going to be the end of, you know, quote-unquote, part one of, of Black Clover. It kind of be like, you know, any of the other series before they get to a time skip. Really just kind of be set up. Act one, part one, overall chapter one, the, you know, the, the, the Clover Kingdom arc, or saga, whatever. Other than that, Drop a comment below on what you thought about this chapter. You know, what were you? What did you? What was your takeaway from it? Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm super curious now of where this could go. Like, what, what tribe or clan is, has really been the enemy at all time, and just no one looked at it because they were too busy fighting amongst each other. Of, you know, they believe humans believed that the elves were the enemy, and the elves believed that the humans were the enemy, and they just think the look of you know what was going on right beneath their feet so they like said drop a comment below and what you thought about this um hopefully you can get to befriend the like button you know thumbs it up and subscribe for more videos and i would really appreciate you know uh, i that if you you know if have any friends that like black clover or any of the other series that i do reviews on if you, you know you shared it as well as uh, showed up for my live streams i do live streams on the weekend we talk about anime and manga and whatnot and uh, news within the community, but also maybe have some just some nice discussions. So on that, I uh, appreciate everyone who is already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening.